October surprise. Hello, this is Carrie O'Donnell from Tarot Soul Writer, and if you would like a personal reading with me, please go to my website, tarotsoulwriter.com, press book a tarot card reading, follow the instructions, and I'd be happy to do a reading for you. And for all of those who have booked readings and have talked to me in a 2020 project interview, it has been a pleasure meeting you. Just some housekeeping the 2020 project we are moving to the end of our interviews i've invited as many readers that i could reach out to if you are a reader in our spiritual community and you have not received an email from me and you would like to interview for the 2020 project please email me my email is down below and we'll get you scheduled for everyone else who is viewing there are a few time slots left in february and march just a few I am shutting down interviews for the public at large at the end of March. And then I'm going to start editing and pulling this together. The diversity of experiences, the depths of your stories are so inspiring to me. And it is an honor being the keeper of your stories. And I am going to do my best to showcase our experiences in the best light possible. And that brings me to today. And we are going to read on October 2024. The first thing that I got was October Surprise. Surprise. Question mark. You know, I was thinking of like all the different October surprises that we expect in past presidential races. Many of them trying to expose some sort of scandal. And I would suspect that nine times out of 10, the October surprise had to do with a sex scandal. When we had Hillary Clinton, it was a little different. We had the email situation popped up around this time, upsetting her presidential bid. This is even on another level from Hillary. I've never gotten anything like this before. And I'm trying to put this together and I'm just going to preface what I'm getting is that October is going to be a very difficult month. Very similar to what I got for February, where people are just like, where's the justice and what's happening? And I mean, we have just started the month of February and we're just moving into that energy. But between like February and April, it definitely seemed challenging. But then in the summer, it seemed like we were getting justice and things were starting to move. Uh, there are some big changes, but there's also been relief because of different leadership shifts in the world. But October, I feel like we're taking a step back. It begins with Pope Francis. I get that the Pope may be crossing over or stepping down from his duties this month. It wasn't clear to me. Um, I feel that the Pope was really low energy and he wasn't in the best health. Uh, I believe if you look it up on Google, that's what they're saying overall. I do get a sense that he's taking a turn for the worst during this period. So he's either too sick to move on and do his duties or he actually succumbs to his ill health. This transition with the Pope becomes a sort of symbol for October. Like people turn it around as, oh, Pope Francis, he's the last Pope. There seems to be a lot of conflict in the Catholic Church that is overflowing a bit in light of this transition with the Pope. And there's a lot on social media that this is a sign. I get, where is the church going? End of days. So there's a lot of fear that struck up with the Pope. Now, again, a lot of this could just be social media influence. 
people who will take a story and pump fear into it. But whatever it is, it seems to take off a bit. Then I get A Tale of Two Cities. Now, that is a book by Charles Dickens. It's about what was going on with the French Revolution. And I, I just get these two cities. So I do feel like I was in the Middle East. And I believe I'm dealing with two countries. And I feel like it's the Palestinian people and Israeli people. And we're dealing with those two territories. And possibly two cities are involved here. I haven't gotten much on the Middle East through these big picture overviews. But I feel like this time the Middle East was front and center in October. And what's going on there sort of unravels from the Pope going through some sort of transition. I wrote, there is vanity and pride. I hear broken promises. What you have traded has no value. Fool's gold. So I remember earlier I had gotten, I think it was September's, where they seem to be negotiating possibly some sort of land deal, having their own territory. There, there seem to be a brokerage of negotiations, possibly in a neutral place like Egypt, where they were negotiating um, a two-state solution. That's what it felt like to me. I feel like broken agreements has something to do with this. It's as if they made an agreement between both parties and then suddenly one side takes it away and says, what you have traded has no value. So it's something they conceded or something they were like, okay, we'll take this and then you can have that. And then what they took, it's like suddenly, no, this isn't good. This has no value. It was something like that. So I don't know if it's the actual land or it's something financial that they've negotiated, but whatever they gained in the agreement, there are second thoughts. It's possible this is Palestine that's making the decision. Then I get, and this is for entertainment purposes only. This is only my strange visions in my head, but I did get a possible assassination attempt. And I did feel like I was still in the Middle East situation. I was not in the United States. And after a lot of card pulling, I felt like it might have been an attempt on Netanyahu. They did not show me the result of this assassination attempt, just that it would occur. Usually when I get information like that, that usually means it could change. So prayers uh, are going out there so that such violence or political violence doesn't happen. I, I don't care what you feel about a certain party. I don't think political violence is positive in any way, but I do feel like right now the energy is moving toward that attempt to take out Netanyahu. I saw heat, flame. I get rocks, bricks, people throwing rocks. I got the word stoning. And then I heard a holy battle. These could be images to represent fighting and a bombing. So there might've been some sort of violent attack. It seems like people are in the streets. So even if I don't have a weapon, they're, they're throwing rocks to protect themselves. The holy battle was interesting because of where it is in the world, but it's like the death of the Pope or the transition with the Pope, the Pope stepping down. I, I'm not 100% sure in what way this is going to go down, but that like jump starts. So I feel like we're playing out some sort of end of days scenario. It's as if that's what they want this to be. I'm, so I, I want to clarify it. I don't think this is end of days, but I feel like I'm getting that imagery because the people who are involved in creating the conflict have that mindset, right? They're, they're trying to create that narrative. Then I heard global international relations. We need personal security and protection. And then I see a messenger coming to Biden. This could be about his own personal security during this time. But I also feel this idea of global international relations. It could even be a message from the NATO allies. There's a sense that everyone is talking about this. We have information. We have a messenger. We have our intelligence on the ground. This is what's happening. The message goes to Biden. Um, Biden is in communication uh, internationally. 
the major countries are talking, they're communicating. This is positive, okay? This is a positive thing. Then I see a mass exodus of people. I hear covert activities. And then I see humanitarian aid. So because of the bombing and because of whatever I see here as in this battle around this broken agreement, I get people just moving. Like it's, it's like a whole group of people, refugees. That's what this is. This is refugees trying to move across a border. And that's when we get the humanitarian aid. It's like, I don't have a home. I don't have a place to be. I can't be here anymore. And then they're moving. You must be committed to understanding another's point of view. Greatness, it's out there, but you have to come for it. Emotional intelligence is important in this moment. So I feel like it's Biden, possibly the NATO allies. There could be some other countries involved, but I feel like it's countries that understand the importance of this moment. Emotional intelligence is important. The people who are able to have a clear head, who aren't wrapped up in, in passions and conflicts and emotions that have gone back hundreds of years. So we have clearer heads coming together to negotiate this, that this is a moment of greatness for those people who want to stand up for peace who want to try to reel this back and get everyone back in control again, back to the tables I just heard. Like, let's get this back to the tables. You have to be committed to understanding the other point of view. That was the message from Spirit. This broken agreement is partly, it partly unraveled because one side didn't feel like it was completely heard. I think that the redo for these negotiations have to include people who could broker really having people understand the other's pain. This is more, <laughs> this is more like a therapy session. I feel that is needed than it is just a peace negotiation. It's very interesting. We're at a very interesting juncture here with this conflict. At the same time, I got that there will be mass UFO sightings in this area of the world. Again, very interesting. They're going to take it as a sign. They'll probably say these sightings could be signs from God. I think at the end of the day, they're telling me they're actual UFO sightings. In some way, they're sending a message that enough's enough. I do feel like we're getting help here to not escalate these passions to an extinction level. Let's just put it that way. Then I get Trump. And I heard a modder to some, and then I hear national security. There are only endings here, isolation. He is lost in fantasy. Miracles do happen. I get Trump wandering the desert, abandoned. I get violence, explosive times. I alone can fix this, he says. The way the images came, and I tried to read it exactly as I got it, I am still not convinced that Trump is here. There are two ways that I can interpret this. A modder to some. There is some indication here that he's no longer here. He's a modder. He gave it up for the clause. I feel like the people who moder him will be MAGA and some of his diehard supporters. The national security thing, I feel like news now, since he's no longer here, is coming out. And we understand what a national security risk he was. The idea that I still get isolation, lost in fantasy, only endings here, you know, miracles can happen. And the image of the desert and wandering the desert. This is one of two things. Either he's here in a coma state, and again, he is going through some sort of reckoning in the body, or he is already crossed. And he is lost in some sort of purgatory type state, some sort of state where he has to come to terms with his actions on earth. There does seem to be 
some sense that he, he is isolated as a soul and he's going through some sort of reckoning, some sort of soul reckoning. Then I wrote, classified documents are released to the public about Trump. Land and sea, I hear. He was a coward. People are going to realize how he didn't stand up for democracy, that he didn't stand up to moments of greatness. I, I keep going back to that quote, greatness. It's out there, but you have to come for it. And I think he came, he didn't understand what greatness was. I feel like there are multiple meanings in what I heard there. Then I wrote, people feel like they are slaves to the system and there is no hope. This is a sad time for America. So I believe news is coming to the forefront here where people realize they were pawns in a bigger game. And I'm not just talking about Trump at this point. I think this has to do with the entire Republican Party, the corruption and the money corruption that's coming up. The game was rigged, you know, by big business and big money donors. And that the little guy really was a slave to the system. MAGA. They are tormented mentally. The sword will fall. Will it fall on me? Depression. Some see the painful truth. Some. Some are actually afraid for the first time. There are people, I think, at this point in October who are going to jail. There is enough information coming out now, enough truth, enough documentation, where there are people who may have been involved with certain aspects who are asking, are they going to come after me next? Am I going to be okay? So there's a, there is a lot of mental anxiety and torment here with that group of people. And then I sort of morph into the United States and the Texas border. I get there is a showdown in Texas. I am getting the card game, Texas Hold'em. I guess that's a form of poker. I'm not a card player, but they referred to that game. There are threats. Call their bluff. It's intense. Ego inflation. A terrorist event could be around immigration at the Texas border. I heard Judgment Day. We are fighting for our land. There is violence. I get the word addiction. I see tunnels where people smuggle drugs and humans across the border for various reasons. I hear the word crazy. There could be violence or terrorist activity around these tunnels. I also get electronic communication around the CIA. Like there is surveillance or spying on the doings of the people in this area. They are trying to get information. I see water as well. So the coast could also be part of this surveillance. So there's a lot going down in Texas right now. And it's not good. It's going on at the same time that the world, the global world is going a bit nuts. And there's fear there. The United States is also erupting. My guess is it's because it is October, because people are not happy in the Republican Party with the nominee. For some reason, I got a man, but even if it's Nikki Haley, either way, whatever choice that is, they're not going to be happy. I feel that the people who supported Donald Trump still want Donald Trump, but they're frustrated because he is no longer here. They're getting all this information, all of this truth coming at them. We already have a lot of issues with the border. We have the Republicans who are running on the fact that the border is a mess. We also have the Republicans overall who are in control of the House, not willing to negotiate with Democrats. Heck, they're not even willing to shut down the border if Biden wants it. Maybe that's that word crazy. Like there's a whole level of crazy here. And it's usually based on people who just want to believe what they want to believe, but they, they're not actually willing to solve the problem right now. They just want to show their anger. There is something going on. I don't know if this has to do with, you know, let's secede or, 
let's take the border in our own hands. But it's serious enough where there are uprisings of violence and the CIA is doing some sort of surveillance on the people who seem to be part of, let's just call it a mini rebellion. Now, then I get an image, and this is a metaphor. I get an image of a woman in a cowboy hat. She's beautiful. Long, curled hair. It goes all the way down her back. And she has shorts and very, very long legs. And she's barefoot. She lights a cigarette very coolly, and then she drops the lighted cigarette into a pool of gasoline. She turns and walks away slowly, calmly, while the gasoline flame ignites a pile of TNT. There's a huge explosion, but she keeps walking. She never looks back. I believe this represents some sort of terrorist activity. It's interesting that she's a woman because I'm not sure if this may be another aspect of explosions around the abortion issue. I don't know if she's pro or against, but there is some sort of terrorist activity and it might be about women or through women. It's interesting that the woman wore a cowboy hat and I was originally with Texas, so it very well could be in that state or near that state that this occurs. So we have a lot of little mini explosions in the United States, literally and figuratively. And then suddenly I get voting and the election. There are debates supposedly this month. We are just around the corner from a national election. And I wrote, there is injustice because of hate. People are anxious with the election. They are hoping for the best outcome, but are in fear that they will not have a just outcome. I do hear the word cheating. So I do believe there is going to be a lot of talk about all the things that we talked before. Um, Write-in ballots, how we are going to cast our ballot, early voting, who's eligible to vote, voting districts, how votes are going to be tabulated, all of it. And then you have the disinformation that everything's unsafe and there's rampant cheating. And that might be why I'm hearing the cheating. There could be the accusations that everyone's cheated before we've even really started. But I do know in, in October, a lot of people can vote early and that might be part of this. Then I got, you must focus on the task at hand until completion. I see the Selma Bridge in Alabama. I forgot what year that was, but it was a voting rights march and a massacre. And I wrote, there may be some civil rights violations around voting rights. People exert a lot of effort, but do not see results. So I do believe we have a lot of organization to make sure people can vote, that people have the right to vote, that people have a right to hold a bottled water in line, you know, while they vote, whatever shenanigans they throw at people, I feel like there are advocates and people who are helping people to vote and advocating for people to be able to vote fairly. The thing with Selma is it didn't turn out that well. And there was violence involved with that in order to make people be in fear around voting. Again, I feel like there could be threats and other nefarious activities that put people in fear and make them afraid to go to the polls. A lot of effort to dispel that, but it's it's like a sieve, like pouring water through a sieve. And it's like, it's just leaking and I can't feel it. So when I plug up this hole, something else goes somewhere else. Oh my goodness, they're showing me like uh, the dike in the, isn't there a story, uh, a Dutch story about the little boy who sticks his finger in in the hole to stop the leak in Holland. And then another hole comes up. And for some reason they're showing me that story. I think I heard it when I was a little girl, but it's going to be like that. Then I wrote this, which almost came out like a poem. It's a message from spirit. Don't sweep this under the rug. Why are you repeating the same cycles? Collective trauma. 
Why do you reenact the Civil War? Deep wounds here. Why do you dive into the trauma again and again? Sit in this pain. Examine these holes in your collective consciousness. Feel whole again. Damage over time and generations. Clean your room. So I feel like what they're saying here is that we're in this cycle of repeating trauma that's not even ours. It's from years ago. They make reference to the Civil War. And it's funny because we were just watching a movie, uh, my husband and I, last weekend. That's probably why they brought it up. Um, Sweet Home Alabama. with Reese Witherspoon. And there is a scene where her father is a Civil War enactor. And my husband even said, why do they do that? Like, why would you want to reenact such a horrible time in American history? It was a brutal, horrible war. I will go as far as to say that it has ripped such a deep wound in our psyche, in our overall consciousness. They said collective consciousness. It's put a hole in it. That that is one of the reasons we're experiencing what we're experiencing now as a nation. It's like we haven't resolved it. We just put it under the rug. They said, don't sweep this under the rug again, right? It's out there. Now you have to examine it. You should have done that over a hundred years ago, but now you have to do it. You have to do it now, or you're not going to survive it. That's what I got out of this. Clean your room. It's time. And let's clean, as my mother would say, clean your room right. Don't stuff everything in your closet. It's time to stop repeating the trauma. It's time to examine the trauma and the heartache and the hate and let it go. They say, focus on the future. There are better times ahead. Walk away from the past and move beyond old wounds. Then I get an image of the $6 million man. Uh, for those of you who are of a certain age, you remember this show from the 70s. I think it was Lee Majors. He was the bionic man. And I got the beginning of, of the intro. We can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the first bionic man. And then I wrote, science fiction becomes science fact. There could be something with robotics or AI that comes to fruition because of the violence in the world at this time. How ironic, right? So at the same time, we're having all these little mini explosions and conflicts rising up in this month of October. We also have technology stepping up to actually help mankind in some way. The bionic man was a part computer, part human. There may be some science technologies. For example, if I lost my leg. Maybe there's a way they're attaching some sort of, in a sense, bionic leg or body part that are inspired by AI or computers. I do feel like there is some connection here, so we'll have to see what's happening. Then I wrote Kamala. Kamala is working it right now on the campaign trail. She is the queen, honing her skills of leadership, showing she has compassion for others. The reason I think I'm seeing Kamala in a campaigning role very hot and heavy, is because of what Biden is going through right now. I had already said in the previous video that they were trying to have him lay low a bit and rest up so we could go for the final push. And then I got October like, hello. Like October, there's so much that I have to deal with, so many fires that I need to put out. And what I wrote was, he is traveling back and forth, international and domestic. Yo, yo, beware of stress. Bad luck. Attempts to overcome difficulties. He is a courageous leader, giving inspiration and embodying the art of being humble. So I do get him back and forth. I think whatever's going on in the Middle East during this time period He's doing a lot of global things. This may not have been part of the agenda. I mean, it shouldn't be, right? It's October. I got to get elected. I'm going to probably stay close to home. I'm going to handle international things in my home base. And, and maybe he is. Um, but I, I felt like travel, though, going back and forth. Maybe he has to be part of peace talks. 
Maybe he's flying to Europe to see the Allies. There's business overseas because all heck is breaking loose and I have to handle it. So Kamala is stepping up. Kamala is the eyes and ears on the ground for that daily, let's kiss a baby, let's shake hands, let's give a speech, state to state, city to city. She's the one who's taking that role. And I believe other Democrats will as well, but she seems to be the head. Then he has to come back to the states and he has to work on border issues. He's working with information from intelligence sources to figure out what's going on at the border in Texas and with the domestic disturbances and the voting rights. He has to quell those fires. I kind of took this idea of being courageous leader and embodying being humble. It's like saying, I have to put aside my ego and the election part of it to the side because at the end of the day, I am the president. So I have to do the presidential stuff first and then I'll worry about that part. There seems to be a lot of faith on his part that it will all come together. I hear the words, we need to protect our leaders. We need to make decisions. Do you want to be free? I see Dorothy's shoes click together. You were free all along. And he seems a bit angry. So this could be in reaction to what's going on that I see as far as domestic disturbances. It's kind of like, you know, you can't go after your leaders. You know, we need to protect all our leaders, all our leaders, Republican or Democrat. Political violence has no place here in the United States. You have to make a decision, for example, Texas, do you want to be free? And when I say that, because I know a lot of my viewers are like, I'm from Texas and we don't agree. And I know that. So when I say that, I'm referring to the people who are running the government, not necessarily the Texas people. I believe the majority of the Texas people want to be free. They want to be Americans. They want to be part of the union. They also want a secure border. They want to fix these issues. They don't want to do it this way. This is not what we want. And I feel like Biden's just about had enough at this point. There's some anger. There's some disgust here. So what's going on? So I think the little bit of dark Brandon's coming out. Right here. You know, this is Milwaukee. You know, that, that Joe Biden, not the you know, loving and compassionate Joe Biden. He's had enough. This shouldn't be happening here. So you will hear a little bit of that energy coming from him. I wrote hope and despondency, ups and downs. I see Biden on an amusement park ride. <laughs> he wants to get off so many difficulties. I get him grieving and the words moral suffering comes up. He has a dark night of the soul moment. I see him praying in an empty church. I get the story of Christ praying in the garden before he is arrested and the crucifixion begins. Thy will be done, I hear. Now, I am in no way saying Joe Biden is a Christ figure, but I feel like I'm getting that imagery because of his connection to prayer and because of the similar circumstances. Metaphorically, for those people who follow Bible stories, that was a moment in which Christ had to surrender to his destiny. He knew what was going to happen. He was hoping that it wouldn't. He was trying to gain strength. He knew betrayals were coming and it was his moment of surrender. Surrender to a higher power. I feel like that's what I'm seeing with Biden. This dark night of the soul moment is a moment when he questions if he can pull this country together. I think he is grieving or there is moral suffering here for some horrendous acts that are done on our soil. We'll call them domestic disturbances. And he's praying because I believe his faith is important to him. And that is the moment when he knows I have to do this election. I have to get through these moments. I want to get off the amusement park ride. Just, do I have to do this? Do I have to be president again? But the answer is yes. Yes, you have to be president again. This is your destiny. This is what needs to be done. And it kind of ends with that 
thy will be done. And I submit. I get Biden motivating people to rebellious causes and quests. And by rebellious, I don't mean more domestic terror. I mean rebelling against tyranny. I mean rebelling against voting restrictions. Use protest. Use peaceful protests. Use your voice. Use your voting power. That is the ultimate rebellion, to vote. I get him decoding a message. Something hidden overseas. A warning. The Middle East again. So there is some coded message that comes through. Again, this may be some sort of intelligence. Then I get army, Middle East again, and covert operations. So it's very possible there could be some sort of military activity on our part to help with some major conflict that could get out of hand. Biden is going to be wrapped up in that even more than the election or what's exploding. I think what's exploding domestically and around the voting rights here in America is because they know he is distracted by what's going on overseas. I think that's where that anger is from. It's kind of like when your parents have to attend to something outside the home when you were a kid and you had to watch your little brother because it was something important. This is an emergency. I have to take care of that. And then you, you know, all run around the house and make a mess and eat your parents out of house and home or do something you weren't supposed to be doing. And your parents are like, I had an emergency. I needed to leave the house. I needed you to be responsible. And look what you did. This is the energy I'm feeling from Biden behind that anger or disgust or that little sharpness that I get from him. Then I get him tied to something. And it looks like he's attached like a giant umbilical cord. And he says, I'm not trapped. That is a construct of the mind. No, we are free if we say we are free. So there is some metaphor in that. I've been trying to figure it out. I'm not trapped, he says. So maybe there is some way he ties, they tie him to some event or something he says or something that's not popular because this is D-Day for the Republicans. This is, this is October Surprise Month. This is the only time they have to convince people to vote Republican, to convince people to vote at all. And Biden is acknowledging he's tied to something in some way that might not be popular. But he ends with, we are free when we say we are free. The final message is, love leads the way. Live for something greater than the ego's desires. Come together. Unity sees you through. And that is my October 2024 message. It's going to be a difficult month. It is the last push. And we have both international and domestic eruptions that are going to keep us a little stressed. But we are free if we say we are free. So we will stand and we will pull through. I'm looking forward to seeing how things pull through in November. If you like this reading, please like, subscribe, share with your friends. Don't forget, this is the last push to be part of my 2020 project documentary. I will be back as soon as I can with the next video. Until then, you all have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye now.